Gina. Thank you for that wonderful presentation and everyone for being here today. Um, I think it was about a year ago the Bolus company went into SMRT to kind of have a similar discussion, just kind of keeping ahead of the times for, you know, to be able to educate our clients on it. And even from a year ago to this, there have been so many things that have changed in that 12 months just really just speaks to the point of keeping ahead uh, or with the changing times. It's pretty incredible um, in terms of what has happened in the last three years and where we've shifted from, you know, plexiglass around our workstations to having more meeting spaces than we do private offices. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get forward, move forward with our panel discussion here um, and just do some quick introductions, then we can have all the panelists come up. Actually, why don't we bring the panelists come up now so you know who they all are when I introduce them. Um, so if you don't mind coming up and taking a seat wherever you feel comfortable. Great, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so um, Robert Moore, who is uh, Chief Administrative Officer of Barry Dunn. Um, Barry Dunn uh, just recently, well, I guess in the last two or three years, relocated their Portland offices kind of in the midst of a pandemic. Um, and so I think uh, he really oversaw that whole move and the redesign of that space. So I look forward to hearing really how, uh, how kind of things have changed, maybe from when moved into the space to now. Uh, which I'm sure things are a little different. We also have Maureen Lafferty, uh, Vice President of Talent Development and HR Business Teams for L.L. Bean. Uh, L.L. Bean just finished construction of their new headquarters in Freeport, uh, which is a beautiful project if any of you have driven by on the, on the way up. Uh, and given kind of the, the future of workspace is all about people, as, as Gina mentioned, I think it's great to have a HR point of view um, on our panel. Uh, we also have Dave, David Tucci, who's Chief Operating Officer of Aroma Joe's. Uh, kind of a smaller company in comparison to uh, our other panelists here, uh, but they've grown substantially over the last couple of years and I know have plans to just continue growing at that pace. They also just recently purchased uh, an office building and under construction right now, um, so great to have that point of view uh, as well. Uh, and also Mary Gamage, Director of Real Estate for Hannaford. Uh, Mary's been in this position for a long time, just has a great wealth of knowledge. Uh, and with regards to this discussion today, and also been very instrumental with the renovation of Hannaford Scarborough campus as well. So thank you all for being here. Um, so really to kinda, I think some of these questions uh, were provided by the audience uh, and also those um, from panelists, just really kind of reflecting a little bit on the presentation that Gina made, and I hopefully we'll be able to touch on anything, uh, everything. Uh, as Gina mentioned, there'll be a Q&A kind of at the end of this, so uh, we'll have our panelists stay up and we can uh, field any questions that you have. So I guess we'll just start right off uh, with Maureen. So is LL Bean handling policy around remote work or hybrid staff with location choice? And do you currently have any fully remote employees? Do you now or will you in the future have mandates in place for number of days in the office, number of employees, et cetera? Thanks for that question. Yeah. Um, I would say our approach is to not have a policy about having a policy. Uh, for a uh, number of days in the workplace. Um, so just for a little context, in my answers today, I'll be speaking about our Freeport-based, office-based employee population. Obviously, we have stores, manufacturing, warehouse, returns facilities where um, our employees are on site all of the time. Um, for our headquarter building in Freeport, we are not mandating uh, particular days in the office or um, requiring a number of on-site days. And we were really intentional about that. And um, we got a lot of questions about that, like along the way, um, as we were building the building and as we were anticipating moving back into the building, people kept saying, really? Really? You're not? Really? You're not mandating? Really? Like, I don't have to be here a certain number of days? Um, and so we had to be quite intentional about um, really reassuring people that we were not doing that. And um, we have found that areas are designing their own approaches. Um, we've got, for instance, merchandising and product teams that do need to be in the office more frequently. Uh, so, so they've designed their approach based on um, their business roles and their jobs. 
Other areas like our IT function um, don't really need people on site as often, and so those folks um, tend to be more remote or more hybrid. And then we have everything in between. And you know, we find that most, um, our busiest days in our HQ are Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays with a lot of people, um, probably the experience of folks here, a lot of people choosing to work from home on Monday and Friday. Um, I, don't, I don't anticipate that we will mandate on-site days or frequency going forward. I think we will probably find our way and find our norms and probably gravitate toward um, you know, sort of more office occupancy, again, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, but I don't see us um, moving to any type of mandate in the future. Got it. Um, Robert, do you have any policy <clears throat> on a policy? <laughs> no, our, our approach is very consistent. Um, really trying to encourage and foster kind of an organic um, return to the office for those that it works effectively for. 50% um, of our workforce is full-time remote anyway, uh, in offices or home offices around the country, um, and we have nine uh, office locations, um, also in different, different states. Our largest, obviously, our headquartered office here. Um, and again, we're, we're really trying to support our employees to make sure that they have the tools, equipment, the space to work most effectively, um, but making sure that our spaces um, can draw them you know, where it's most effective and makes most sense for them to be in the office to work and where it meets their, their particular needs and the needs of the business. Um, and I love uh, Gina's uh, um, thing, I hadn't heard this, magnet amenities. Um, but that's, uh, that's kind of our approach too, is that making sure that there's, um, our spaces are compelling enough that it draws employees um, to come to the office when it makes sense and that it's a desirable and effective um, place for them to work and importantly for them to collaborate with their colleagues. Well, so maybe a follow-up question to that is what kind of incentives are you offering to organically bring those employees back in or in? Yeah, so the incentive, we don't really have any incentives to, uh, we're not mandating and we're not cr creating any um, kind of formal incentives to bring people into the office. Um, but indirectly, um, for our office space staff or people that live, you know, within close proximity of our offices, um, you know, the attraction is the spaces themselves. And then one other thing that is somewhat of a motivator for people that really value having private dedicated space, me being one. I love having my private office and I'm in it almost every day. Um, but what we do is if you're gonna have dedicated space, dedicated private office space, um, you need to be in the office at least three days a week. The balance of our office space is then flexible space and we use an app called Space IQ. It's available for all of our employees and it's in, and it's in use in all of our offices. So any employee, no matter where they're located, if they are in proximity or need to come to an office, they can use the Space IQ app to reserve one of our office spaces that is not otherwise dedicated. So. Dave, what's the, what's the plan as of right now? What's the plan? Um, well, to have a plan, you gotta look back uh, where you came from. So I think it's important as um, I and we, Roman Joes, are a little bit different than the rest of the other um, organizations here. So. You know, in the onset of, of COVID, um, we had a staff of 10 at headquarters, um, and we, like everybody else, shifted to 100% um, remote. Uh, but through that period, we went through a pretty rampant growth spurt where we were a drive-through focused model um, where all our competitors were, were closed, right? Um, so that really drove um, trial through new consumers and our existing customer base continued to, to support us. So we went through rapid growth. We, um, we increased revenues by about 52%. We added um, 30 new locations, about 42% growth. Um, and as a result, you know, we needed to add additional headquarters to support that staff. Um, when we were going through this, we heard from a lot of our HQ staff that they, they missed one another, that they wanted to come back to the office. So we, we, we made it optional. Um, and then they started to gravitate back Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And we've doubled our workforce since then, going from 14 to currently 27. We'll have 30 um, staff at headquarters by the end of this year. Um, 
in when you're hiring new people, right? The, they ask, what's your policy? So we didn't really have the policy. It kind of created itself, but you had to put something on paper. So our current policy is they're required to be in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That can be managed on a departmental basis. Um, and we outgrew our previous office. We're in a transitional space of a sublease. And as Nate um, mentioned, we've got a building that we acquired. It's under construction currently that we'll transition our workforce into at the end of this year uh, with the plan over the next 30 months to double our workforce to go from 30 to close to uh, 50, or 27 to 50 um, by the end of 2025. So there's a significant number of people that I haven't even met yet, right? So what is gonna attract them to come work for me, for us at Aroma Joe's? And I believe, we believe what Gina touched upon is if you're saying people need to come into the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which we are, is not just giving them a workplace, a work point, but giving them a variety of work points so that they can choose to work where and how they want to work that meets their needs on that particular day. It might be a focus environment. Maybe they've got back-to-back -back Teams calls where they need a focus room and they can just close the door and they're there. And there's other days where maybe they just want to be in a coffee house environment, right? We're going to have a fully functioning Aroma Joe's as the heart and the epicenter of our headquarters where you can post up next, somebody, next to somebody. You can have um, an informal meeting over a cup of coffee. We're going to have an outdoor space with effective technology so that people can work outside in our extensive summer months here in Maine, <laughs> right? Really smart outdoor space that's uh, really would be used eight weeks out of the year. But <clears throat> the point is, is it's not about the foosball table, right? It's about creating effective work points, multiple work points that's attractive for people to come together to collaborate when and how they need to. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mary, uh, just want to hear what, what Hannaford's doing and, you know, what does the hybrid workforce look like for you and your organization uh, from a space perspective? And are there assigned workspaces, unassigned, mix? Thanks. Um, so we are in a kind of an interesting situation in terms of where we are in our construction process. So just setting a little context on Hannaford as an organization, first of all, many of you might know we're part of a very, very large global organization. And so our headquarters in Scarborough are actually um, occupied by several different companies, not only Hannaford. Um, the support brands that accompany us there, are many of them are very much involved in our business, but many of them are very involved in um, other brands, the five other brands, or the four other brands that do business under Ajo Del Hayes you know, that spread down the East Coast. So we have four um, large corporate office buildings on the East Coast. Um, the Hannaford folks, which are about a third um, of our around 900 to 1,000 associates that are, occupy that building, um, are, you know, are pretty, you know, attached to, to this locality, et cetera. But some of those support brands, they're, you know, like I say, they're used, their daily interactions, they might be a one or two person team within that office that's part of a 20 person team that has um, folks in five different offices. So even before the pandemic, we were very challenged with trying to make, have an office setting where people could make good connections. It was before Teams types calls really took off and you know the, the technology was really available. So um, setting that as sort of the backdrop, um, we also really struggled for several years in SMRT, I'm sure has a lot of stories to tell about this, of trying to figure out how we were going to um, change our corporate office. I've been with Hannaford for 25 years and it looked exactly the same before we started our construction. Um, 25 years ago when I got off the elevator and had my job inter interview as it did, um, you know, a year ago. So um, we knew we needed to do something, but we were, we were really struggling as an organization before the pandemic. We had started a lot of initiatives around trying to figure out flexibility in the workforce. So even then, you know, it was a topic, I'm sure that many of us were dealing with in our organizations. Um, so 
So we all left the building. There was a few people rattling around in our, you know, 200,000 square foot building throughout the pandemic. And then um, just about the time um, that we all got vaccinated and were ready to, to get back to work, um, we finally got an approval and sort of a game plan for what our, our corporate office of the future would be. And so we were able to kind of gather for a little bit and then we had to sort of, you know, really condense the building down to a very small temporary workplace area while we tore it apart and started constructing. So that's where we are right now. Um, since last fall, we've been um, operating in this, you know, small temporary workspace, which is, you know, has a lot of limitations. Um, but we have been using the time um, to really decide what are we going to do. And we're trying to learn from some of our, our peers. And where we um, ultimately decided to land is to go with the more